inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un ridan bika da'ihi wa tasliman li amri a'zam allahu wujurana wa wujurakum bimusabina bi abi abdillah il usai wa ja'alana allahu wa iyyakum min at-talibin bi sa'rihi ma imam al mansur al mu'ayyad as-salam alayka ya aba abdillah as-salam alayka ya ibn السلام عليك يا ابن امير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمه الزهراء سيده النساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى الارواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله ابدا ما بقيت وبكي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله اخر الاغل مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى اولاد الحسين وعلى اصحاب الحسين كل عين باقيه يوم القيامه الا اين بكت للوسائي the night of the 11th is arguably the saddest night in the history of islam It is the night of oppression towards Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasallam. <laughs> This is the night that heroin scenes took place in the Karbala. But as call as always mentioned many people underestimate the oppression that ahlul bayt went through on a night like this many people do not appreciate what ahlul bayt alayhi wasallam went through on a night like this what the daughters of rasulullah and the sons of rasulullah went through on a night like this it was the most difficult night Now the question is what actually happened on a night like this I want us to go through this musiba by looking at what actually happened step by step for us to appreciate the difficulties and the pains of Ahlul Bayt on the night of the 11th especially the pain of Zainab sallallahu alaihi wasallam You know, mu'minin and mu'minat, as we are told, the event of Karbala happened in a year 61 AH. That is 50 years after the grandfather of Abba Abdullah left this world. As scholars always mention, 50 years after the man who brought this religion left this world, his grandson was butchered in Karbala. Not only butchered in Karbala, 
people were willing to mentally and physically torture about Abdullah. <laughs> Many youth ask this question. How did you know all that happened in Muharram and especially on the 10th day of Muharram? So let me take this opportunity to outline where do we get all this musiba from so that I and you are able to appreciate this musiba. The first person that we got this masaib from is Hamid ibn Muslim. Hamid ibn Muslim was a person who was employed by Yazid. And Yazid told him, don't fight against us or for us. And don't fight against Hussein or the camp of Hussein. What we want you to do, just record whatever happened in the land of Karbala. So that was his job. So some of the narrations we recite to you, we receive from Hamid ibn Muslim. The second source of our information for the Masa'ib of the 10th day of Muharram and sham gariba is from the survivors of Karbala. The first survivor is Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam. The second survivor is Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. The third survivor is Imam al-Bakir alayhi salam. And those daughters of Rasulullah and the wives of Ali al-Bayt, we receive this information from them. And the third source of information were the enemies. When Mukhtar, yes, after Karbala, began to revenge the blood of Abba Abdullah. He got hold of three tyrants. The first one was Harmala, as you know. And he asked Harmala, what did you do? Harmala narrated, and we got that information from Mukhtar. The second one was Shimur ibn Ziljaushan. Mukhtar asked him, what did you do in Karbala? Shimur narrated. Mukhtar recorded and reported to us. The third one was Sinan ibn Qa'in. When Mukhtar got to hold of him, he asked him, what did you do on the 10th day of Muharram? He recorded. So therefore, in short, these are the sources of a maktal. And they call it maktal literature. Now let us enter into the musibah of tonight. Allahu Akbar. What actually happened on the night of the 11th? You know, Abba Abdullah was killed an hour before sunset, according to Ru'an. Yani Shemur sat on the chest of Abba Abdullah an hour before Maghrib, Mu'minin and Mu'minat. And you know what Shemur did when he sat on the chest of Abba Abdullah? You know how he disrespected Abba Abdullah alayhi salam. Now Abba Abdullah was killed Mu'minin and Mu'minat. Maghrib came. Karbala was overswept by darkness. There was no light in Karbala. You see in your light here? Imagine the situation of Zainab. You sitting here in your comfort zone Imagine where was the head of Abba Abdullah. You sitting here in your comfort zone. Imagine where was the body of Abba Abdullah. We sitting here in our comfort zone. Imagine on the night of the 11th. What was the situation of Bibi Sakina? Narration says. Maghrib came. Karbala was swept with darkness. You know, after they brutally butchered Abba Abdullah, the first thing they did was what? Allahu Akbar, Achurukum Allah. They came and surrounded the body of Abba Abdullah. When they surrounded the body of Abba Abdullah, they began to loot the belongings of Abba Abdullah. <laughs> Narration says. This one removed the turban of Abba Abdullah. That one came and removed the shoe of Abba Abdullah. That was the first thing they did. But there is that line, which is a very sad line, which breaks the heart of the lover of Abba Abdullah. We are told there was this person who came the last moment and he was trying to take something from Abba Abdullah. 
he found nothing but he spotted the ring on the right finger of Abu Abdullah. And that ring was given to Abu Abdullah by Rasulullah. This person came next to the body of Abu Abdullah. He tried to remove the ring from the finger of Abu Abdullah. He could not remove the ring from the finger. You know what he did? Allahu Akbar. He looked for a sharp knife. <laughs> and for him to get the ring, he had to cut off the finger of Abu That is why one narration said on the night of the 11th there was a moment when Bibi Zainab was going around to sort out the bodies huh? she stopped and began to cry why she stopped because she saw that piece of finger of Abba Now let's go to the second thing they did. First they looted the belonging, cut off the finger of Hussein. You know what they did? Umar ibn Sa'ad looked at his companions and he called out, oh my companions go and sharpen the hoofs of your hosts. They went and sharpened the hoofs of their horses. And they all came over up the side. I want you to go and trample on the bodies of the companions of Allah. But you know, narration said, for each and every companion of Allah had a family member, either direct or distant relationship in the camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad. They went to the body of, they said, go to the body of Habib. Habib, members of his family said, no, we killed him, we will not trample his body. They went to Muslim Buna Ausaja. Members of his family said, we killed him, we will not trample on his body. Huh? They went to Ali Yunel Akbar. They said, no, we killed him, we will not trample on his body. Huh? Narration said, they kept going one after the other. Huh? They realized that almost each and every companion of Abba Abdullah had a family member in the camp of Umar ibn Sa'ad. Then Shemir and Umar ibn Sa'ad look at these companions. They said, tell me, who does not have a family? <laughs> they said, Wallah, when we went around, we realized the only one who does not have a family is Usain. Allahu Akbar, you know what happened. Mu'mineen, you know what happened. Imagine Karbala was very dark. We are here in Leicester in our comfort zone. Karbala was dark. Imagine they were hungry, no food. Huh? What they did, they began to trample on the body of Abba Abdullah. We are told they try to break each and every bone in the body of Abba Abdullah. Allahu Akbar. But there is this line of the Musiba when they were trampling the body of Abba Abdullah. Sayyidah Zainab. She heard they were breaking this. She came out, but Imam Hussein al Abidin was watching. Sayyidah Zainab said to him, what is been happening? What is been broken? He said, Allah Sayyidah, they are broken the bones in the body of my father. Some narration said, he said to her, they are breaking the ribs of my father. That is why that Maulana told us, you remember very well, two ribs were broken on the earth. One rib was broken when the person was alive. And the other rib was broken when the person left this world. Huh? The rib which was broken when the person was alive was the rib of Fatima al Zahra. And the rib which was broken when the person had already departed from this world was the rib of Abba Abdullah. Now let's go to the last thing which happened and the final one. Huh? 
they trampled the body of Osai. And they left the body uncovered. You know what was the third thing they did? It was already late in Karbala. Imagine the situation of the daughters of Rasulullah. Imagine the situation of Bibi Sakina. Umar Abdul Saad called out, I want you to go and burn the tent of Osai. Then after trampling the body, the next in order was to burn the tent and Haimaga. Set fire on it and burn it completely. Allah, they began to head towards the camp of Abba Abdullah. Sayyidah Zainab was the Layla, Ramla, Um Kulsum, Rubab, Imam Zain al Abidin, Imam al Bakr, Dailam, the wife of Zuhair ibn al Kain. They were all there in the tent. They begin or they began to burn the tent. They set fire. Fire began to burn and destroy the tent of Ali Muhammad. The ladies were running up and down. Sayyidah Zainab was trying to protect the ladies. Huh? That is why later on, when Mansur Dawaniki burnt the house of Imam Jafar. When Imam managed the fire, Imam wouldn't stop crying. Companions of Imam came and asked Imam Jafar, why can't you stop crying? He said, I've now understood what Sayyidah Zainab went through on Shami Gariba. Allah, Zainab was going up and down to protect the children and the women. Huh? But Sakina, her clothes catch fire from behind her. And she was running and the cloth was burning. Huh? She met this man, Hamid ibn the Muslim, huh? the one I said we got information from. She asked the man, are you with us or you're against us? He said, I am neither with you nor against you. She said, oh man, have you read the verse of Quran? Where Allah said, Muhammad yateem hafala takar. When it comes to an orphan, don't shout and scold at an orphan. The man said, oh young girl, I read this verse, what do you want? The young girl said, Ana yatima to Abi Abdullah. Oh man, know that I am the orphan of Abba Abdullah. She asked him, have you read the second verse? Where well, Allah said, وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنَارَ When someone asks something, don't deny. He said, yes, I read what you want. Roman, can you show me the direction of Najaf al-Ashrama? Oh Allah, I mean, show them the direction of Najaf al-Ashrama. Sakina turned the direction towards Najaf. And she called out, As-salamu alayka ya amir al-mu'minin. Oh grandfather, come and see how they humiliated us. Where were you when they sat on the chest of my father? Where were you when they chop off the two arms of Abil Fadl al-Abbas? Where were you father when they killed Ali Yun al-Akbar? Let me leave you with this last line. As the Khaimaga was burning, Bibi Zainab was going around to protect them. There was a man who began to walk towards the tent where Bibi Zainab was. But Bibi Zainab saw him coming. She asked him, man, what are you coming for? He said, Allah, I am coming to protect you. Because I've realized what you are going through is painful. Then Bibi Zainab asked that man, have you seen a lady around? You know who she was asking about? She was asking about Bibi Rubaba. He said, I've not seen a lady, but I heard the voice of a lady. He said, can we go and get her? They got there. Bibi Zainab asked Bibi Rabab, why are you not with us? He said, Zainab, I have a breast milk. I am looking for Asghar to breast milk. She said, Zainab, baby, I'm not a good mother. They denied us water before. Now I have the water. I am looking for the body of Asghar to provide him with food. <laughs> Allah, I tell you, there is this line which breaks the heart of the lover of Abba Abdullah. You know, in that darkness of the night, Dailam, the wife of Zuhay, she took a piece of cloth and she gave it to her servant. By that time, there was servant. She said, oh my servant, take this piece of cloth. Go around the bodies. When you see the body of Zuhay, recover it.
Allah, he went around the bodies. He came back holding the piece of cloth. Balaam asked him, haven't you seen the body of Zohai? What was his response? He said, Wallah, Balaam, I've seen the body of Zohai. But when I approached to cover, I saw the body of Hussein uncovered. I wouldn't be uh, to cover Zohai while Hussein is uncovered. Allah, the ladies, each and every one of them remembered their sons. Layla began to remember Ali bin al-Akbar. Ramla began to remember Qasim. Rubab began to remember her beloved Ali bin al-Askar. But narration says all of a sudden the ladies became tired and they were all sleeping. Only Sayyidah Zainab remained and later on she also fell asleep. But in that sleep, as we are told in the narrations, Bibi Zainab dreamt a man who was wearing black. And when that man appeared, Bibi Zainab said to her, to him, who are you? The response of that man, he said, can't you recognize your father? Bibi Zainab said, father, where were you when they sat on the chest of us? Inna lillah. وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منكلب ينكلبون والعاقبة للمتقين